Hello everyone. This is a new course in Interfacial Fluid Mechanics. I am Harish and Dikshit. I am a faculty member in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at IIT Hyderabad. This is a brief introductory video explaining to you what this course is all about. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will have an idea of what are the key topics that will be covered in the course, even uh, determining if this course is relevant for you or not. Now, the key topics that will be covered in the course are highlighted in the slide. So we'll first be starting with um, governing equations and the boundary conditions for interfacial flows. Then we'll be looking at statics, specifically capillary statics. Uh, in this topic, such as the Euler-Lagrange equations, the idea of energy minimization, what is the shape of so drops, bubbles, soap films, meniscus. And then we'll be looking at topics such as wetting, what is uh, what does it mean by hydrophobic and hydrophilic surface? The idea of contact angles, spreading parameters, etc. will be discussed. Then we launch into dynamics. Dynamics is where fluids respond to uh, application of forces by actually flowing. Because there's a course in interfacial flows, the interface also deforms in the process. We'll be looking at topics such as capillary rise in tubes. Now, this is a topic that many of you must have looked at. In, even in high school, but we'll be looking at the dynamics of capillary rise, meaning how does the fluid evolve in the capillary tube. We'll be looking at thin films, particularly stability of thin films. Then we'll be looking at classical problems in fluid mechanics, such as coating flows. And then we'll be looking at some stability problems. Uh, more particularly, I'll be discussing the classical Rayleigh plateau instability. And then uh, depending on the amount of time available, we'll be looking at a few advanced topics such as effect of intermolecular forces, the topic of moving contact lines. So in this particular presentation, I have put together uh, a few key topics um, in, in the following slides. So let's first look at how a course in interfacial flows or interfacial fluid mechanics differs from a traditional course in fluid mechanics. So we can actually have this classification as single versus multi-phase flows or single versus interfacial flows. Now let's take the classic example of a single phase flow, which is a flow in a pipe. So in a flow in a pipe, you have two walls and you would apply a standard boundary conditions on the wall, such as no slip condition. And you would ask, what is the shape of the velocity profile when you applying a pressure gradient? So you would get, if you know the viscosity and the density of the fluid, you would ask, what is the velocity profile and you get a classical parabolic velocity profile and in the developing region you get a boundary layer effect and so on. That's a traditional course in a single phase flow. It's a classical problem that would many, many of you would have studied in fluid mechanics courses. Now the equations in this course that we'll be using throughout would be incompressible Newtonian fluids. So you have the inertial terms on the left hand side. You have pressure gradient and the viscous terms. Um, one of the expectations from all of you is that you have an idea of what these equations are, how these equations are derived and so on. That's something that will be not will not be done in this course. Now, in these kinds of problems, when you have single phase flows where the boundaries are well known, you would apply boundary conditions on the solid surface and they're usually well defined boundary conditions such as no slip, no penetration condition and so on. Now, let's look at a case of an interfacial flow. Now, the same problem again, flow in a pipe you have the walls which are no slip condition, but now you could actually introduce a new complexity. You know the liquid viscosity and the density, but now you could be having a bubble that is traveling to the flow. Now you could ask a variety of questions. If I know the gas uh, bubble, uh, the viscosity and the density of the gas bubble, if I apply a pressure gradient, what is the speed of this bubble? And further you could ask, what is the shape of this bubble? Similarly, another classical problem in fluid mechanics is you have a vertical plate. When you dip it into a reservoir, you have a meniscus, that is the interface bends near the surface. And then you could ask, if I take this plate and lift it up of the bath, just like a painter would do for a, when they dip the paint brush into a box of paint, then you could ask what would happen to the uh, fluid. In this case, you see that if you drag the uh, plate sufficiently fast, rapidly, then you get a coating and a variety of questions could be asked. What is the thickness of this coating as a function of viscosity, density, and also you are on the interface, you have a surface tension and you also could have gravitational effects because the two fluids would have different densities. 
Now, in these cases, we again we will be assuming that the, the equations that govern fluid flow are incompressible Newtonian fluids, but now we have two fluids, and therefore we will have to write down separate equations for the gas, which is again Navier Stokes equations for the gas, and Navier Stokes equations for the liquid. Now, uh, you could have a system where both the gas and the liquid have to be simultaneously solved. These are called two phase flows or multi phase flows or interfacial flows. You could also have a system where the gas is just a passive medium and offering a constant pressure. In such cases, we refer to them as free surface flows. Now, in these problems, unlike the single phase problems, the boundary uh, conditions at the interface have to be derived. And more importantly, the shape of the boundary needs to be determined as part of the solution. That's the fundamental complexity that you'd see in interfacial flows. Now, in this particular slide, I'm trying to show you what are the common differences because of one new additional force that we'll be considering throughout this course, which is the effect of surface tension. Now, let's look at the effect of surface tension in the context of, um, first, let me first explain how the case of balloon. Now, if you see a balloon, we know that the pressure inside is out higher than the pressure outside. And one of the reasons, this is one of the re main reasons why balloons tend to burst. If you basically apply the pressure inside exceeds a critical value, they tend to burst because the pressure inside is higher than outside. This is also true for soap bubbles. Children like to play with soap bubbles. They make soap bubbles. And one of the most fascinating things that children find is that these soap bubbles tend to pop. Now, the pressure inside is PI and the pressure outside is P0. And this PI is again higher than P0 because at the interface, there are two interfaces in this case. There's gas inside and there's gas outside and there's a thin film, which is basically soapy water and you have surface tension. Now the pressure inside is higher than pressure outside again due to surface tension at the interface. Now this can also be seen when one basically looks at the example of a, this can be seen when you look at the case of a soap bubble that is bursting. Surface tension causes a pressure jump across the interface. And this, therefore, in other words, the pressure inside, like a pressure on both sides of the interface can be different. Now we look at the subject of capillary statics. The well-known problem with capillary statics is capillary rise in tubes. So a common question in capillary rise in tubes is here you're seeing a thin capillary tube and which fluid has risen up to this point. And you could ask, what is the height of this capillary tube? What is the height of this capillary rise? Now that I've called it as H. Now, another problem that is of interest is if you look closely near where the tube meets the liquid bath, you see that the interface is deformed. You could ask, what is the shape of that interface? So that's the meniscus. This is a close-up view of the same thing. This is a meniscus near a wall. You could ask, how does the shape depend on, let's say, the contact angle, the way the interface meets the surface. So this brings us to the next topic, which is wetting and contact angles. So here I'm going to show you three images. These are sessile drops. Sessile drops are drops that are sitting on a surface. And you can notice that these three drops are fundamentally different in one important aspect, which is that the angle that they make with the solid surface is different. If the angle is acute, which as measured inside the drop, we refer to such surfaces as hydrophilic surfaces. And this angle is greater than 90 degrees. We refer to them as hydrophobic surfaces. This is something that we will be studying in more detail. So it's important to understand that the nature of interaction between a solid surface and an interface plays vital role in determining the shape of interfaces. Then we'll look at topics such as dynamics and instabilities. Here I'm showing you a droplet that is basically uh, coming down, descending down, and uh, in the process, it basically wobbles, meaning its shape is continuously changing, and then it hits a surface and can exhibit capillary waves. In this particular case, we are taking a plate and pulling it out of, the, of a reservoir, and as a plate basically is pulled out of a reservoir, you see that there is an interface here, and there is a coating that's happening on this interface. Again, we may be interested in asking, what is the thickness of this coating? Now, this is a common phenomenon that all of you must have must be seeing every day. You have a tap, we have, this is a small tap, thin tap, and if you open the tap, then you have a jet of water that comes oozes out. 
and notice that this jet of water as it comes down it's thinning because it's being pulled by gravity but there's also surface tension at the interface between the water and the surrounding air we may be interested in asking what is the shape of this jet can i predict the shape of this jet indeed the answer is indeed yes and that's something that we'll be looking at in this course but another very interesting phenomena that all of you would have seen that if you let this tap this jet come continue to go down you'll see that you'll see that this jet breaks up into droplets so this is a beautiful phenomena that we see almost every day this jet of water breaks up breaks up into droplets and that's called the rayleigh plateau instability so again you can see that these little droplets wobble quite a bit and they are subjected to waves just like in the case of capillary waves on the uh, for a bouncing droplet now all these phenomena um, are basically um, uh, fascinating in, in their own right and these are some of the topics that we'll be studying in the course now there are a few advanced topics that we'll be looking at such as moving contact lines let's look at a simple case of a simple droplet that is sitting on a surface there is a well known angle that the droplet makes with the surface but if you were to tilt the plate one of the things that a common feature is that the droplets tend to change their shape and sometimes they even slide down and the angles on both sides meaning behind on the uh, on on the front side of the droplet which is called the advancing front and the rear front which is the receding front the angles can be very different now the question is why are the angles so different is there a way to determine the relationship between this angle and the speed at which the droplet is going so for this we can actually study the region very close to the contact line and ask can, what is the shape of this uh, what is the shape of the interface what is the angle that the interface is making with the plate so here's an example where we're taking a plate we're dipping it into a fluid and as the as we dip it into a fluid as the speed of the plate increases you see that the interface deforms and you can clearly see that the way the interface the plate is not visible in this particular imaging but the angle is continuously changing so what it tells us is that the contact angle can actually change with speed unlike the static case so these are some of the topics that we'll be looking at in the course there the course is designed to be self contained meaning the material that will be um, uh, given to you should be sufficient to follow the course fully along with the assignments but there are several wonderful books and materials available um the book by uh, the first book on capillary and wetting phenomena is a classic book in this field Ga professor gary leel's book on advanced topic transport phenomena is another important book uh, i also have based my course on a very uh, well known popular course called intertidal interfacial phenomena by professor john bush at mit um then there are some classical books in fluid mechanics such as pantens book on incompressible flow these are some things that students may consult for additional supporting material so i look forward to interacting with all of you during the course thank you